Continuing along the stomach channel, we are at stomach 40, abundant splendor, as J.R. Worsley called it, abundant bulge, as it is um, named in Deadman and other texts. This is the low junction point. So as the low junction point, especially on the foo, in this case, the stomach, this is good at um, enhancing uh, good communication between the spleen official and the stomach official. So if the stomach official is weak, this is a good point to do to draw the influences of the spleen to the stomach, which is about uh, transforming, transporting. So there are times when we are taking something in, we're ingesting it, and we're trying to digest it. Uh, so this supports um, that efficient uh, process so that we're able to integrate what we take in, both physically in terms of nourishment, as well as intellectually in terms of what we experience on a mental level, on a spirit level. Are we able to receive uh, the abundance that life has to offer? Are we able to receive and take in the harvest uh, from all of our hard work throughout the year? And this is the element that follows the fire, right? So this is about the harvest time uh, where we're taking in and um, enjoying and savoring all of the fruits of, uh, and the vegetables uh, that we have worked so hard to cultivate. Similarly, in terms of the work that we do in the world, we're able to take in some kind of satisfying harvest. We're able to receive that and allow ourselves to be fulfilled by that. And that actually, as the wheel of the year approaches the earth time, this is when things slow down. This is when we're able to pause a little more, just like that time after a really delicious meal, we're able to push ourselves back from the table, reflect upon what we just enjoyed, to savor that, to enjoy the moment. So similar, this is a point that's really um, useful at imparting the resonance of that for someone who feels like they, they're not getting what they need, they're, they've been working really hard, they don't really get to enjoy the fruits of their labor, so this is a wonderful point to reconnect them, reconnect the patient uh, with this experience inside, with this resonance. <clears throat> J.R. Worsley stated that this point, along with stomach nine above all others, embodies the essence of the stomach official. He felt that this represents the end of the harvest time when all the gifts of nature have been gathered and stored for the coming year, and all the riches of the harvest lay before us from which to choose and feed on, like a bountiful table. Uh, I believe in terms of the name uh, in Deadman and other texts, Abundant Bulge, I believe that refers to the tibialis anterior muscle, which is the bulge that lies just lateral to the, uh, to the tibia. And so um, as a point that's uh, just over or inside that muscle, right, this is a, a very rich, juicy point. And as a low point, we know that um, that has an effect on uh, the blood, the transverse low, circulates the blood in the chi in an abundant way and the stomach itself is in its ideal form about abundance and reminding us of the resonance of abundance that is available to us uh, as a, as the uh, point on the stomach channel it's fairly close to the middle of the leg um, this is actually an area of the leg where the tibialis muscle and the muscles on the reverse side right um, the gastric nemius, the soleus, these give us a sense of stability, right, and strength. So similarly, um, as a junction point, we can connect to the stability and the integrity that is afforded by the spleen. And as a low point on the food, this uh, draws the influence of the spleen outwards to the stomach by its connection via the transverse low. So this is a way on a psychological level of perhaps uh, drawing the attention outward to the more zong. So if someone is uh, very in, is internalizing their thoughts, uh, internalizing their emotions, this is a way of bringing the, uh, and directing the mind outward, the chi of the mind outward. So we're able to bring things out into the world so we're not storing them and holding them. Because again, the stomach is a foo, doesn't like to store and hold things. That's the job of the zong. So this is a way of um, helping us express our needs. Uh, so that we receive the abundance that we're that we deserve, right? And that's why it's often combined with stomach nine to empower the voice, to empower us to communicate and express our needs. Um, on a physical level, this is also great for 
um, burdens that weigh us down, right? So if we're not digesting efficiently, we're not going to be getting all of the goods from what we eat and drink. And so the body's gonna store that usually as fat and that adipose tissue as that builds up is going to be a burden on us. Similarly, if there's thoughts or experiences that we cannot uh, fully integrate, if we're not able to digest them fully and get something useful out of them, then that's gonna build up uh, and that creates over time almost like psychological or spiritual damp or even phlegm. So past hurts, past wounds, uh, past experiences of not getting what we needed, especially uh, as we're developing early in life as children. You know, we, we need our parents. We need the people that are in charge of raising us. We need that maternal energy wherever it's coming from. Parents, friends, relatives, family, what have you. Uh, so if we are left without that, we can start to feel barren inside. And that, uh, in a sense, leaves a, sort of an emotional or spiritual or psychological void from which we're always trying to fill. So we're always uh, yearning unconsciously for an experience of abundance, which may lead us to overeat or eat things and drink things or eat and drink in a certain way that interferes with proper digestion. And then again, uh, adipose tissue builds up adding to our burdens, right? In that, um, that desire to experience a sense of fulfillment and comfort, right? Which the earth element allows us. So this is a nice point to help transform that. And as we know that this is a, a fantastic point for resolving damp conditions in the body. So it clearly resonates on all levels of the body, mind, spirit in this way. On a physical level, this is also an excellent point for morning sickness especially in the very early stages of the pregnancy. Um, so there are a number of combinations you can use this point with. It's certainly uh, very good to be used with spleen four, the low junction point on the spleen. It's also very useful to combine with spleen three, as well as the back shoe points for the earth, and perhaps even the front move point uh, for the earth on the front liver 13. Again, to support the transformation of that which is difficult to deal with, uh, difficult to find some usefulness in, um, upsetting experiences, painful experiences, especially things that um, resonate with uh, or, or leave us feeling empty inside, uh, uncomfortable, right? Because earth gives us the quality of the flesh, right? It empowers the quality of the flesh, which gives us a sense of comfort. It also is abundant in qi and blood as part of the uh, yang ming which is abundant in qi and blood. So blood gives us this quality of um, the ability to experience the blows of life with comfort and grace. Right? So this is a great point for empowering people who are um, very uncomfortable in their own life, uncomfortable in their own skin, P people who feel weighed down and heavy by the burdens uh, that they experience, the um, the the situation that they find themselves in in life or the people that are in their life. Maybe they don't get a sense of fulfillment from that. So this is a wonderful point uh, for treating those things. So stomach 39, lower great void. This of course is the lower hussy point of the small intestine. So uh, along with stomach 37, and they're often done together, this is an excellent point for treating any issues uh, that, are, um, that we're experiencing involving the small intestine obviously in combination with other points, especially in the middle and lower jowl. Um, this uh, is another supporting point uh, to help us sort that which is coming into our field, that which uh, is coming into our sphere of attention, right? So again, the small intestine helps the heart sort out what to pay attention to now, what to pay attention to later, what we have to deal with now, right? It's the beginning of a triage process. It's not the assessments and judgments that are afforded by the wood. It's more about um, this needs to be dealt with now. This can wait. Okay, this is uh, more long-term, right? So when the sorting capacity of the small intestine becomes compromised, the stomach can also suffer, right? Any, uh, an inability to sort properly can result in stagnation, right? which then affects the digestive tract or our ability to absorb the nutrients from what we eat and drink. Uh, classically, this is a point that's indicated for mania uh, or withdrawal, 
uh, that occurs um, simultaneously with digestive uh, obstructions, uh, digestive disorders. And so these are usually um, generated uh, from the bowels uh, when there's excess heat, right? So this is a nice point, along with stomach 37, to vent out heat that's been accumulating in the digestive tract. On uh, a more emotional psychological level, this is often, um, often treated when there's been some kind of intense shock or intense experience that's upsetting the heart, which the heart cannot um, adequately process or contain or be present with. And over time, heat uh, can generate from the blood, the heart blood that begins to stagnate in the chest. And so the small intestine in support of the heart, as one of the officials attending the heart, will then uh, try to drain that heat downwards uh, into the small intestine organ so that it can be excreted out of the body. So if it's unable to do that, maybe if it's overwhelmed or weak un unto itself, then heat begins to accumulate, and that can also agitate the system, agitate uh, the, the digestive system, um, and then over time can create a lot of dampness as the moisture is almost like cooked out, and that heat and that dampness combined can then over time infect the system and agitate the heart. So one might start to experience uh, sort of like a manic depressive state. Uh, these swings between excessive uh, elation and great sadness or isolation. So moving on to stomach 38, which is between stomach 39 and 37. This is um, a classical point indicated for shoulder pain, um, lines opening or branch opening. Um, this is roughly halfway. Uh, along the along the shin, and I found it to be extremely useful as an empirical point for shoulder pain, uh, frozen shoulder, especially when needled on the opposite side. An interesting thing that I've just uh, come to understand clinically through the you know using this point and uh, experimenting for um, for uh, shoulder conditions, especially frozen shoulder, is that uh, this point is especially effective when needled at the right depth, which could be different for each patient. So some patients uh, are gonna experience more relief when needled superficially, and some uh, at a moderate depth and, depth, and some at a more uh, substantial depth. So what I, have, what I do is I needle the point, and then I actually, while I'm uh, manipulating the point, starting at a superficial level, I'm having the patient move their arm and shoulder around, and then, uh, going progressively deeper and deeper and deeper until I get to that sort of sweet spot where all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, now, oh yeah, now I can raise my arm up. Okay, yeah, now I can bring it up a lot higher. Oh yeah, that's when the pain is starting to subside. So that's something to keep in mind as you needle this point. Um, and it is like, as I mentioned, classically indicated, indicated for painful obstruction syndrome, right? The obstruction, especially uh, in regards to the shoulder, um, as one of the names is branch opening, perhaps this is for where the Yang Ming, uh, for issues where the Yang Ming uh, channels branch from the torso, which would be uh, the shoulder, which is uh, where the arm branches off of the torso, and the hip, where the leg branches off from the torso. Uh, I have actually found this to be sometimes helpful for folks with um, uh, hips that are kind of like locked up where there's a, a cold type of arthritic condition um, that's penetrated uh, into the depths of the joint, affecting the, the joint capsule, and also when the cold has over time led to blood deficiency. But definitely more often, uh, I found it to be successful for shoulder problems. So moving on to stomach 37, upper great void. Uh, again, this is the lower uniting point, the lower Hussey point for the large intestine official. And this is also one of the points for sea of blood along with stomach 37. Uh, in terms of using it for the sea of blood, um, I was taught by J.R. Worsley that you would needle uh, all the points on the left side first, and then you would needle the points on the right side. So it's almost like um, one giant point, right? Where you needle one side and then you needle the other. So 
In the case of sea of blood, you would needle all three points on the left, and then you would needle all three points on the right. But more often than not, I use it for, um, well, actually going back to that, what I found is this is a very powerful point combination, the sea of blood, uh, for restless leg syndrome and other conditions involving blood deficiency or stasis as a result of blood deficiency. And restless leg, of course, there's a number of different patterns re um, that uh, relate to that. It could be internal wind. It could be a systemic qi and blood deficiency. It could also be a liver uh, and kidney yin deficiency. Um, <clears throat> what I've found more often than not that even what, you know, especially actually, not, not despite, but especially when there's a, an internal wind situation that involves the liver, as they say, if you're going to treat wind, you need to treat blood. So this is a phenomenal point combination that I've been using that I don't really see mentioned online very much uh, if you look up you know, restless leg syndrome and acupuncture. Um, I haven't really seen anyone talk about this, but this is a point that I probably do every week because there's so many people coming in with restless leg syndrome right now. Uh, so this is a fantastic combination, point combination to use for that, to uh, empower the uh, quality and the circulation of the blood. Otherwise, it's used as a supporting point for problems, especially physical problems involving the large intestine. It's a great point for um, helping uh, to include in a point combination uh, to help move stagnation in the large intestine, in the bowels. And this is um, also a nice supporting point for people who are experiencing some kind of grief and loss where that grief or loss is resulting in some kind of chi or blood stasis. So that often shows up when it's um, very chronic. So maybe there was a, some kind of loss uh, that was important to this person that, that uh, struck them very deeply, that affected them very deeply. And you know, they may not realize it until later, but all of a sudden you know, they start to feel down, they start to feel grief stricken, they don't feel them, like themselves. And then they notice, oh, you know what? Uh, next week is the anniversary of you know, my partner's death. Or, oh, you know what? A few days ago, that was actually the anniversary of when you know, we had to foreclose on our home. Or, or something like that. Or a pet dying, right? Or something that happened in their childhood. So this is a nice point to support the other points that you use uh, to empower someone to let go of the energy that they're holding on to uh, from the past so they can digest the experience of the past and again you know dealing with the large intestine uh, which is an official on the metal element how do we find something of essential worth or value out of the experience even if it was something awful so this is a nice uh, point to uh, support that process as well as people who are um, losing their appetite for life they really can't take in anything new because they're not really able to let go of the old. So this is a nice point to support in that regard as well. <clears throat> so stomach 36, leg three miles, Zusan Li, obviously one of the most, uh, most commonly used points on the body. It's a fantastic chi point, right? It's stomach 36. Um, Good for three more miles on the leg, as it were, right? As a metaphor for uh, supporting our ability to go on, to give us a boost of chi, to uh, help us persevere, to help us uh, keep going, right? It's a master chi point. It's also a husi point and an earth point, and done at the proper time or season. It's a harari point, the earth within the earth. And honestly, this of course is, you know, probably everybody's on uh, on everybody's list of desert island points. You know, if you could only uh, do a certain number of points, a few points, a handful of points uh, forever. You know, of course, this would be one of them. Um, it really uh, embodies all of the best qualities and characteristics of the earth element, abundance, nourishment, um, comfort, uh, fulfillment, satisfaction, uh, all of the best that the earth provides us, right? So this is a phenomenal point for reminding people that love is available, that self-love is available, that appreciation and support and nourishment uh, is available to you. You don't have to go anywhere else for it. It's right there. Um, 
This is a, another great point to stimulate the Wei defensive qi and the yin nutritive qi. So when we're very well protected, um, we can be well nourished, right? There's, as you know, there's two fundamental treatment principles. One is to uh, safeguard the exterior and the other is to support the interior and nourish the interior. And so this is really good for both. As we know that the Wei Qi really begins uh, in terms of the Qi creation process uh, in the gut, right? In the middle jiao. And so it's the turbid Qi from the Gu Qi that helps to uh, uh, create and uh, sustain our Wei Qi. This is a nice point on a mental emotional level to help us to integrate experiences, just uh, as many points that we've mentioned before. Um, but I think this really gets to the heart of the matter uh, in terms of one's ability to process, intellectually understand uh, what's happened to us in our life, what's happening to us now, um, also to help us uh, process potential future experiences, right? Um, this is a phenomenal point to moxa. Uh, I would really suggest uh, any, any patient who comes in who's very qi deficient systemically, who shows empty pulses on multiple pulse positions, uh, pale tongue, um, you know, tired, listless, that uh, you can either moxa this every chance you get or even teach the patient how to use direct moxa or uh, give them a moxa pole moxa cigar to take home and to moxa over this point uh, once or twice every day. This is a phenomenal point to include uh, for uh, the treatment of people dealing with chronic fatigue or anything where the digestive system is suffering in any way. Uh, it's so tonifying on the body level with the qi and the blood. Again, Yang Ming is, is supposed to be uh, replete with qi and blood. So this is a nice uh, treatment to combine with say large intestine 10, arm three miles, or even large intestine 11, right? To regulate the digestive system, to make sure it's functioning properly, that nothing is stagnating and no heat is, is developing. Um, this is also as a qi blood tonifier and nourisher. This is really good to help us experience a little bit more emotional ruggedness, right? So we can experience a little bit more comfort and satisfaction just in our own self, regardless of what's going on in the outside world, what's, regardless of you know, maybe what's going on internally with our condition, we can connect to this place where we can be content with our inner virtues, with our inner strengths, with our inner gifts. Right? This is also a great, as we mentioned, uh, a point to support the Wei Qi. So this is really good for immune problems and autoimmune problems, especially things like um, diabetes, uh, AIDS, right? Any long-standing illness that has been depleting the body. Also to help us deal with um, medicines that are relatively toxic to some aspects of our being. Of course, like chemotherapy, radiation, this is a phenomenal point to be done at least 24 or 48 hours after such a treatment. I would say wait a couple of days if you're supporting somebody dealing with cancer treatments, if they can hang on a couple of days, it's best to wait so they're not um, eliminating the medicine itself, right? So it's very supportive at helping us resolve toxins, uh, resolve toxic experiences, toxic thoughts, right? It helps us to be more in harmony with the cycles of life, with the seasons of life, right? Earth is about transitions. So this is a phenomenal point to help people find their way through a difficult, uncomfortable time when they know it's gonna take some time, right? Like the COVID-19, uh, epidemic that's going on right now, the pandemic, you know, we're, uh, we're in a state of uncertainty right now. Um, so, you know, how do we uh, help people feel nourished and safe and supported uh, in this time where we're not sure if we're going to get our needs met, right? If we're going to be stricken down with this illness uh, or, you know, what's going to happen to our finances, those are parts of our resources, just like our chi and blood. So this can be a very nourishing point for the spirit. Um, to help us look around and see what we do have available to experience nourishment and satisfaction and comfort.